These products, as well as our other mold kit components, can be purchased separately outside of our mold making kit. Strategically placing your sprue and vents is key to casting void free parts. So with this part, I have already poured the first half of the mold. Before I place the vents, I first establish where I will be placing the inlet or sprue. Usually I place a sprue at what will be the bottom, low corner of the part when angled for casting. It is also a good idea to place the sprue where your part has a thick wall section. Doing this should help increase the flow of material when casting. Our 8th inch vent rod stock can be cut down to whatever length you would like. Simply measure the desired length and score the rod with an X-Acto blade and brake. Using a disc sander, sand the tip to form a conical shape leaving about a 16 inch diameter flat on the tip. This part has some tight detail where vents will be needed to avoid trap bubbles. For this part, using both large and small diameter vents makes sense. I am using the small vents where several vents are needed in a tight space. In most cases, I angle the mold so I have a low corner where the sprue is and a high corner that will help direct any trapped air bubbles out of the part and through the vents. Apply silicone ZIP ME301S release to the cured silicone surfaces of the first half of the mold. It's a good idea to brush the release into the registration areas to make sure you get ample coverage so the silicone does not bond to itself. When you pour your silicone, be sure to pour slowly so you do not tip over the sprue or vent rods. Now that the silicone is cured, twist and pull the vent rods out. Make sure to remove the cured glue from the vent tips so they will bond properly when using them again. We insert straws to have excess casting material which acts as makeup material if there is material shrinkage. This also keeps your workspace clean. For more videos, check out our YouTube channel.